There are a lot of great systems in the RV, but specifically the RV water pump, it's a great thing. You can have flowing water when you're out there with no hookup. So you can have flowing water at your sink and do dishes. You can take a shower where there is no water to connect to by using the fresh water in your tank. But the water pump is one of those noisy contraptions that's not that efficient and could have some problems. If you run it dry, you can burn it up. That If you have a water leak, it's not gonna turn itself off. But there is an intelligent controller that's out there that you can add to pretty much any RV water pump out there. And it's going to give you a lot of benefits and features to make it run quieter, make it run smoother, make it run more efficient using less power. It can even stop a water leak and it can turn the water off if you're going to be leaving the RV. It can actually shut it down so that you don't have any problems. So we're gonna back this video up a little bit and go back before the install so that we can take a look at this unit and kind of put it through its paces and test it to see if it actually lives up to the things that it claims that it does. So at first look, this is a small little unit. It's the IRV WPC. It's a small package, but it kind of reminds me of, of the case that we have for the microwave easy start that goes along with the AC and makes it more efficient at startup so that you can run it on a smaller generator. But this has a similar case, but it's much smaller than that. You have some dip switches on the inside. You have a turn dial and a button on the inside to be able to program this so that you can custom tailor it for the settings and safety features that you would like on your pump. So before we get to testing it, we need to install it. And at first it looks a little confusing to install, but it's really not that complicated. We need to add power to this, and then this is going to feed that to the pump. And that's what gives us the features built into this. And then for the water connection, we have a sensor on here to be able to connect this to the outlet of the pump. And then the water is gonna to go to the rest of the RV. And the sensor is gonna tell us everything that we need to know for this to work. So for the water connection, we can just loosen the fitting that's on the outlet of the pump. And if we have room for this fitting, we can just go directly onto the pump. If we need an extra elbow or a flexible line, they had options for that too. But if you have room for it, you can just put this right on the pump. Then you connect that fitting that was on the pump previously, you can connect to this. So this just goes right in between there. And you can see on that flow sensor, we're just easily going to be able to connect that, but we're going to hold off until we initialize this. Now for the electrical connection, we're gonna disconnect the 12 volt positive lead going to the pump. So that wire is gonna disconnect and it's gonna go into our wire harness, into this red wire. So the pump is always gonna be connected to the positive side of power and this is always going to be powered also. So that's why there's just a Y in here. It's a real simple connection. On the negative side, we need to cut that that's going to the pump. And on the pump side, it's gonna connect into this Wago connector, which is the negative side of the pump. And then for our negative supply into the system, it's gonna be the other side of that wire. We need to strip it and put it into the Wago connector here also. So that gives us our positive and negative that is now going to feed the pump and this module. And this is going to, you can see what's happening here. That negative side is gonna be able to modulate and change how that signal is sent to the water pump. And that's how this guy is going to work. It's gonna be able to turn it on and off as it needs to. Now they say it's a good idea to be able to mount this in a place that you can get to it. So if you wanted to change any of those settings you can because like I said there is a button in there you have your dip switches and you have a dial for being able to change some of these settings so we'll go over some of that later so let's fast forward into this I've been able to test it out and I want to share with you what I learned what I liked and what I didn't like the settings that I am going to be using so first off number one our pump wasn't super noisy wasn't super loud but this did bring down the noise considerably it brought it from sounding like this to sounding like this. And so for both of those, I had the camera only like a, a foot and a half away from the pump recording the sound of it. So it was super close. It's not like you're gonna be sleeping that close to your water pump. So that sound is amplified. When we're inside the RV, my wife was like, I didn't even really know that the pump was on right now. So it did bring that sound down considerably. Some people have that pump in a bay like underneath a sink or something like that. Ours is in the kind of that storage bay behind that Nautilus panel. So it's even that one more degree of separation to the inside of the RV. The other other thing with the sound is now that the pump is much smoother so when you're using the faucet and you're not using a whole lot of water it's actually able to modulate down so you're not having it just that pulsing sound it sounds much more smooth and it gets really quiet when you're using it at that 
that lower setting of water coming out, I was surprised at how quiet and how consistent that water pressure was. It did a good job in that range. But the thing that really surprised me about this unit was the amount of power consumption went down dramatically. Now, all these tests, I tried it with the different fixtures. So the kitchen faucet, bathroom faucet, and the shower inside of the RV. Because if I just had the hose going wide open, it really didn't tell me a lot with the sound because that's not usually what we're concerned about with the sound or the amp draw or the, the use of it. So I wanted to make sure I was using the fixtures inside of the RV. And so when I was using the fixtures on the inside without this module installed, it went to around six and a quarter, 6.2 amps that it was drawing when I was running the pump. So after testing this, after installing it, we get 5.8 amps. So it is a little bit less, that's 0.4 amps. So just under a half an amp of savings. So it's nice to know that it's not drawing more power, but saving you just, just a little bit. But there are a lot of other settings that are packed into here. So let's dive into those. Now, the first setting we can change is to change the pressure inside of the RV coming from the pump. So the way that this is shipped, it stops at around 33 PSI, and that's with that dial set on the two positions. So you can crank that up to the nine, and that'll bring it to around the mid 40s, around 44 PSI. So that's a real easy setting to change if you wanted to. So you can pick the, the PSI, the pressure inside of the RV coming from the pump that you would like. Now, the second one is if we were to switch that dip switch number three up, and this is the run watchdog timer is what they're calling it. This is one of the features that can help stop a leak if it's just continuously running. So the way it is shipped, if you switch that switch number three up, it'll run for five minutes. If it sees it running, that pump running consecutively for more than five minutes, it's just gonna shut it down. It's gonna think that something's wrong and that you have a leak somewhere and you don't want that water just gushing out the entire time and it'll shut it down after five minutes. You can raise that up to like a, a thousand seconds or something like that, which comes to around 16 minutes. I think that's what I read in there. I just left it at the factory setting, tested it out, and it did shut off at five minutes. So you can see four and a half minutes and the water turned off on its own using the module. Just a simple timer. Now, typically when you're on pump and you're taking a shower, you're not gonna take a long shower. And oftentimes you'll get in there and turn the water off. So you'll, you'll get wet, you'll turn the water off, you'll lather up before you turn the water back on to rinse off. So in that in-between time, when you get wet, you turn the water off before you rinse, that timer is reset. So you would even have five minutes to rinse off after that. And so as long as you turn the water off before the five minutes and you turned it back on, this fault wouldn't turn the water off. And these faults are really easy to reset. You just turn the power off to the pump, you turn it back on and you're good to go. Now this probably is a setting that we're not gonna be using, but if you wanted to have an extra layer of not exhausting your entire tank, if you had a leak, so you got a leak and all that water was just getting pumped into your RV or expelled onto the ground, you're not gonna lose all that water. You're not gonna have as much damage and as much water inside of your RV if it turned it off in the time, the timer that it was set for. The next setting you can choose on here is dip switch number four. If you put that in the on position, it will give you a low flow cycle counter. This will be two things. Number one, it's gonna help your pump from overheating if it's in a low flow situation where it's just kind of kind of coming on. After 20 cycles, it'll turn itself off. And oftentimes, this is what a leak, how a leak would start off. It'll just be a little spurt here and there. Oftentimes, you can even hear the pump, but with the pump being quieter now, you may not hear it. So this could help you stop a leak in its tracks. Now, the next setting you can select on there is the number five dip switch. You turn that on and it'll be the long run timer. So this is if the pump has been on for an extended period of time, it'll shut itself off rather than just staying on indefinitely. So some people like to be able to turn their pump off when they leave. So this is kind of a timer so that if you left the RV, it's gonna have a timer to turn itself off. You can change that time to be longer, but that's what you're looking at. It's a long run timer. This is one that might be a little bit inconvenient if you go to bed at night and then you wake up in the middle of the night, you gotta go to the restroom, you have no water because you have to power cycle that pump so that it comes back on. It may not be something you wanna deal with at night, but some people like the peace of mind knowing that their pump is turned off when they leave the RV. So it has that timer in order to do that. Now, the last setting that I ran a test on this unit was the dry run timer. That's dip switch number six, if you have that selected. If it's pulling just air and there's no water, so it can't bring it up to pressure, after 30 seconds, you can change 
change that number if you wanted to. It will turn off the pump to save the pump so it doesn't overheat. So a lot of these pumps can be very resilient. We did have one that got ran for about an hour, years in the past where it didn't have any water but it was running. It did develop a little bit of a leak so we ended up replacing it. This would have protected that after about 30 seconds. I have heard of people having their pump on for about two days and it was just fine. So some of these can be very durable but this will save the pump so you don't have to worry about it running dry. This is a setting that I wish maybe there was a switch on the outside that I can select it and deselect it because when I'm using it to fill up the tank on the inside so it'd be the sanitize function on our Nautilus panel say I'm out there boondocking and I wanted to bring more water that I was going to pump into our freshwater tank it thinks because it can't get up to pressure that it's dry running so it turns itself off after 30 seconds so it'd be nice to be able to turn it off for that turn it back on for all other normal use case scenarios so that would be nice to be able to have an external switch or maybe even a, a Bluetooth option so I get it from an end user standpoint it'd be nice to be able to have some of these things selected from the outside because those settings you have to take the cover off you have to change the values you have to move the dip switch and put the cover back on it's really not that difficult to set up but if you wanted to change it on a regular basis it would be a, a little bit more cumbersome than I would like to go through it's a really nice unit and I get from a design standpoint exactly why it's designed that way. I think it's a, a great design and they did a, a really good job with it. But from an end user standpoint, it makes it hard to change that one in particular, that, that dry run timer. So that's it in a nutshell. It has a lot of features to be able to protect the pump, kind of protect your RV if you develop a leak. It, it gives you some parameters to be able to shut that pump down so you're not pumping more water into the RV. But overall, how quiet it is, the smooth operation, it's so much smoother, that water coming out when you're going for a lower setting. Usually, like when you're doing boondocking, you're not just going full blast on all the faucets. You're usually dialing it back and it gives you that smoother, quieter water as that pump is working. Now, this is something that I can't really attest to at this time, but it says that it makes the pump last longer. I, I can see how that can be. It's drawing less power. It doesn't seem to be working quite as hard and it's not that hard on, hard off. It's able to modulate to what you're actually doing at the faucet. I'll be sure to pin a comment down below so that way as we continue to use it and the performance of it, we'll, we'll let you know what we think of it. But most of these settings I'm probably gonna leave off, but I'm gonna use the advantage of the quieter, less power and smoother water. Oh, I'll also put a link down in the description so that you can go to it. It's a pricey unit, so this may not be for everybody, but for some people that are looking for these options and trying to quiet down that pump, this might be just what they were looking for. There are other ways to try and quiet down your pump. They're not quite as effective as this is, trying to put something underneath it to dampen the sound of the pump, putting something around it, trying to support and cushion those pipes coming off of it. I've had a minimal success with that. It does quiet it down, but not as much as this unit has for sure. This unit has made it much quieter than all those other strategies that I've tried in the past. And I think that's just because the way that it's modulating it, it's much more smooth and it's not vibrating and shaking as much. So you're not trying to dampen that vibration. There's just less vibration in the pump because it's working smoother. So I think that's gonna do it for today for this review of the IRVW PC. It's a very compelling unit and uh, is definitely something interesting that's hit the market for RVers. So like I said, that's gonna do it for today. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. If we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video. There was a little dust on the lids. There you go.